A California man tried to kill Justice Brett Kavanaugh of the United States Supreme Court. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is another declaration of truth from your host, Terry A. Hurlbut. And it's a long one. First, Brett Kavanaugh is all right. The danger got no closer than the sidewalk in front of his house. I'm going to talk about the arrest of the perpetrator and what we know about it. And then I'm going to have a lot to say about the response and the non-response. Honestly, these leftists act as if they do not care about someone targeting a justice of the Supreme Court for assassination. It's at the point at which they would care only if it was one of theirs. Now, if any of you leftists out there want to dispute that, say so in the comment section, unlike some others who shall remain nameless. I don't disable contents, uh, comments, nor censor them either unless they are just too vulgar and especially obscene for family viewing. Before I get into the subject at hand, I want to shout out to the sponsor of this channel, which is Conservative News and Views, link in the description. And be sure to check out the awesome CNAV store. Scroll down near the bottom for that link. Lots of good merchandise there, including this t-shirt. Can you read it? The Trumpinator saying, I'll be back. And while, I'm, while we're at it, I'm going to shout out to another sponsor, BitNext. This is your replacement for Zoom, Slack, the Google G Suite, Microsoft Office 365, Dropbox, WeTransfer, and Chili Piper, among others. Unlike any of them, BitNext protects your content and conversations so well that even the administrators can't see it. So this is your channel for secure comms, conferencing, cloud storage, and file sharing. Best of all, Everything is back end, so you don't even need client software. If you have a browser, you can use Bitnext. Follow the link and give them a try. 28 days free of charge. Can't beat that with a stick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sit down. And I mean sit down and prepare yourselves for a shock. Fox News has the most detailed account of the incident in front of Brett Kavanaugh's house. At about 1.05 a.m. yesterday, June 8th, Mr. Nicholas John Roski of Simi Valley, California, got out of a taxi cab in front of the house. Apparently, he nodded to two U.S. Marshals on foot patrol and then walked away. Those Marshals were there because several pro-abortion protesters have picketed the home for weeks. Then he called 911 in Montgomery County, Maryland, to report himself. He said he, quote, was having suicidal thoughts and had a firearm in his suitcase, unquote the 911 dispatcher, who immediately transferred the call to the Montgomery Com County Police Force. They dispatched two officers to the location, presumably geotracked, from which Roski was calling. He was still on the line to 911 when the officers arrived, and they arrested him without incident. But he had quite the kid in his backpack and suitcase, which officers also seized. Fox News gave this inventory, a black tactical chest rig and tactical knife, Glock 17 pistol with two magazines and ammunition, pepper spray, zip ties, a hammer, screwdriver, nail punch, crowbar, pistol light, duct tape, hiking boots with padding on the outside of the soles and other items. Hey, well, that kid, he could break into the house, bind and gag Brett Kavanaugh, then execute him, gangland style. Then he could literally take a hike, a long one. Instead, he called 911, spilled his guts, and waited for police to arrest him. Now, you're all asking, why would he try to pull a stunt like that? Well, Roski told detectives he planned to break into the house and kill Brett Kavanaugh, then himself. That, he said, would give his life purpose. For motive? He cited the Roe v. Wade leak and the Texas school shooting. He specifically said he expected Kavanaugh to uphold the Second Amendment and loosen gun control laws. The Washington Post reported the arrest first. That report came out at 10.10 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time after the court released one opinion, not on the Roe leak case. Now, for everyone's information, the Roe leak case is Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization Docket number 19-1392. Right now, the court should be in conference, but it has not designated another opinion issuance day. Though maybe later today, after this goes up, they will. The court has avoided issuing an opinion in Dobbs, 
which in any other context would be par for their course. They usually save their best for last, and they do have other cases almost as important as this one. All the same, this could reflect the court's paralysis on this case. It could also reflect Chief Justice Roberts' continuing attempts to break the majority and forge a compromise consensus. Before I go any further, I have links in the description to a lot of tweets from politicians, media people, and other influencers. But if I tried mentioning them all, well, first, this video would run way too long. And second, you'd be able to set the phrase link in the description to music. So I'll just tell you up front to look in the description for links to all the tweets I'm going to mention, fully annotated so you know which one is which. Now, the reaction of interested parties tells you how low American political discourse has gone. At noon 36, the president had said nothing about it. He had the perfect opportunity because at noon he talked of gun control in a speech at Joint Base Andrews. But instead he said nothing about Brett Kavanaugh or Nicholas John Roski or any of it. But Deputy Press Secretary Andrew Bates did send a dry statement to the Daily Wire and to Fox News. Then at 1.22 p.m., Attorney General Merrick Garland did some damage control. He put out a tweet of video giving his response. And among other things, Garland said, and I quote, Last month, I accelerated the protection of all the justices' residences 24-7, unquote. Well, that explains the two marshals. But it leaves out the measures the governors of Virginia and Maryland have taken. Senator Mitch McConnell from Kentucky had plenty to say about how the Senate unanimously passed a bill to augment protection of justices and their families. But the House hasn't yet voted on their bill, and they still won't. I mean, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, can you believe this? What are they waiting for? And in the meantime, the protests continue as if nothing untoward has happened. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas reminded everyone sharply that Democrats fanned the flames with their own rhetoric. For in March of 2020, Senator Chuck Schumer of New York said, and I quote, I want to tell you, Gorsuch, and I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. Now that was March of 2020, and today, crickets. But others have said plenty, and maybe they shouldn't have. The group Ruth Sent Us gives us the prize example. Roski had already admitted he found the address of Brett Kavanaugh on a Ruth Sent Us landing page. So yesterday afternoon, after the arrest, they sent two tweets. In one, they disclaimed responsibility. They disclaimed, I said, while at the same time, taking a stupid dig at Kavanaugh for admitting he liked to drink beer while at college. Newsflash! Beer does not make you an alcoholic! The other is worse than telling. The tweet shows a poster at the school Brett Kavanaugh's daughters attend advertising a crisis pregnancy center. Over it, someone has taped two flyers. One of them shows this quote, If men could get pregnant, abortions would be available at Jiffy Lou. Disclaimer, those last two words are a registered trademark. Now, you may or may not have heard people say that Betty White, whom I remember playing Sue Ann Nivens on the Mary Tyler Moore show, said that. She didn't. No one knows who did. The second flyer is the bad one. It shows pictures of the girls, and the group leaves this message specifically for them. I quote, Leader McConnell and the GOP aren't worried for your safety. They worry only for the expensive Supreme Court they rigged and their own power. Unquote. Again, I say, whiskey tango foxtrot. Let me remind you at Ruth Sentis, you publish the names and home address of Brett Kavanaugh and his colleagues. Now we have an untoward event the perpetrator of which specifically cited you as his source of intelligence. Now, I am not a lawyer, but I wonder whether that makes you liable for contributory negligence, accessory to attempted murder, whatever. You might want to check with your own general counsel on that one. In any event, you owe Justice Kavanaugh and his family an apology and should take those addresses down now, today, this instant. But what did you do instead? First, you call him an alcoholic, which a smart lawyer might construe as slander. 
Then you tweeted out a photograph of a billboard onto which someone, maybe you for all we know, pasted two flyers, one of which is a direct threat against those little girls. Listen, you, even if you didn't set that photograph up, you had no business photographing it and tweeting it out. Molly Hemingway called you on that in her own tweet. Now again, if anyone from your organization wants to dispute what I just said, leave a comment. I'll consider it. And any of you legal eagles out there, if I missed anything, leave a comment. The reaction doesn't stop there. Shortly after the arrest, someone said no one should care about Justice Kavanaugh's safety. One activist then copped to feeling a little schadenfreude. She thought better of it. But then again, why mention it? Someone else suggested Brett Kavanaugh should hire an armed teacher as a bodyguard. Again, I have links in the description to all those tweets. And to this one, Tom Fitton and Tim Poole called these activists on their rhetoric and that of Democratic officials. But you want to know the worst response? Maybe worse even than Ruth sent us tweeting out that photograph and addressing the two little girls? It's from CNN. CNN personality Whitney Wilde questioned whether Roski even had a gun, as she said. Then in the next sentence, she actually blamed right-wing extremists for what happened. Meanwhile, this is now officially an FBI matter. But maybe if Congress had passed the Senate Supreme Court Protection Bill, this might be a direct matter for the marshal of the court. I'll tell you what, if I were Brett Kavanaugh, I'd trust the marshal over the FBI any day of the week. In any event, the court is in conference today. Maybe they'll decide another, uh, declare another opinion issuance day this upcoming Monday. Then we'll shift. Then we shall see. Links to the description of the article to all those tweets I mentioned, fully annotated, and the conservative news and views. I have another link to the awesome online store and to Bit Next, as I also mentioned. And if you like what you've heard, you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. This is Terry A. Hurlbut delivering another declaration of truth and reminding you to let the truth set you free.